Let's follow the path of Dusty's Trail, oh Dusty's Trail, Dusty's Trail. A stage and a wagon are heading west, part of a wagon train lost from the rest. Dusty's the reason for their plight. Thanks to Dusty, nothing's right. Only the wagon master's hand keeps them a rolling to the promised land. All oh, the going gets mighty rough, but they don't seem to mind. It's California, A, that's the place they must find. Deserts and rocks are in their way, but they won't stop, come what may. Mountains and hills that they must scale, but they know they'll make it cause they just can't fail on Dusty's trail. I wish Dusty would get here with that blanket. Glad you know about smoke signals, Callahan. That's part of being a wagon, Master. We'll send up a signal that we come in peace and they'll let us pass through their territory. Hey, what took you so long? How did Olulu out of it? Hey. All right, get a hold of the blanket. Three short puffs mean that we're friendly. Do you want to spell that friendly with a capital F or a small f? <laughs> when you stop jabbering, the fire will go out. All right, you hold that end down over there. Oh, be good right. and tight. All right? <laughs> <laughs> Dusty, you've added two extra puffs. You changed the message. I, I think five puffs mean that we're mortal enemies. <laughs> if they saw those last two puffs, we are in big trouble. <laughs> Dusty just sent up the wrong smoke signal. I don't know what kind of a message those Indians got. Are we going to head north? No, there's heavy snow up there. What about south? Bandit territory. Some choice. We get captured, frozen, or shot. <laughs> yeah, Miss Brookhaven, uh, you folks all set? Yes. Oh, dear, for Cass's sake, I do hope those Indians are friendly. Okay. Tomorrow's a very special day. Darling, you can't expect them to be friendly just because it's my birthday. <laughs> They're really close now. Maybe less than a mile. Well, we can't hightail it out of here now. They got fast ponies, we got slow wagons. Oh, well, we just can't sit around here and wait for them. Yeah. That's exactly what we're gonna do. Indians admire and respect courage, and that's what we're gonna show them, is courage. Right, folks? Right. <laughs> courage. <laughs> Poor and smile like nothing was wrong. <laughs> Remind me later to scream in pain, huh? <laughs> yeah, we are here in peace. We know you come in peace. Mm -hmm. Yes, in Tarawaka smoke signals. Three puffs mean friendly. Five mean lifelong friendship. We're lucky I'm such a lousy speller. <laughs> Well, it's nice that we all came here in friendship. Yeah, I mean, how about that? We're all just good friends, hmm? <laughs> all right, Chief. I mean, if he was a member of your tribe, he would be known as Little Chief Hole in the Head. <laughs> yeah, well, all we want is for our wagon train to pass through your territory. Of course. But to pass through our territory, it is custom to pay tribute. Yes, yes, but we have many fine gifts for you, huh? Yeah. yeah, I'd have him gift wrapped for you, but I don't think you'd want him. You do business, you need a business, man. <clears throat> Chief, how about this diamond? Worth 5,000 buffalo. Rather have one buffalo. 
There's 24 carrots. Tripe grows on vegetables. <laughs> Chief, like this. I accept this as tribute. You may pass through our territory. Oh, it was very generous of you, dear, giving up your favorite walking stick. Well, I must say it goes rather well with that elegant headdress. <laughs> but that's something I'd like to have. Now you may continue on your journey. Ah, thank you, Chief. I've just gotten a most marvelous idea for Carter's birthday. Let's take care of the birthday later. I gotta say goodbye to the Chief. Huh? Oh, before you do, Perhaps you can make an arrangement with him for that lovely headdress. For the, for the headdress? But you, that, that is impossible. Oh, please. It would mean so much to Carter. Oh, for the chief, my gold bracelet. I'll see what I can do. Oh, I can't seem to find my Daphne. Well, she's probably in the stagecoach. Oh, yes, perhaps. <laughs> I'll look and see. Hey, where's Mr. Callahan? I don't know. Last time I saw him, he was checking his horse. Maybe he knows where Mrs. Brookhaven is. You said you had a surprise for me? Yes, Mr. Brookhaven. And you've got your surprise for Mr. Brookhaven's birthday. Yeah. <laughs> the headdress? Yeah. Oh, it'll be the best birthday present Carter's ever had. Well, I sure hope he appreciates it, because I had to trade your gold bracelet and my bowie knife for that. Your bowie knife? Yes, ma'am. Oh, thank you, Mr. Callahan. Ah. I know how much that bowie knife meant to you. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Brookhaven, Mr. Callahan, I don't believe it. Something wrong? No, no, nope. <laughs> well, then why are you so nervous? I'm not saying. What are you saying? I'm not saying that I saw Mrs. Brookhaven and Mr. Callahan kissing in broad daylight, because if this gets around, it... <laughs> Mr. Callahan and Mrs. Brookhaven? Are you sure? I saw it with my own eyes, both of them. Oh, Mr. Brookhaven's going to be devastated. Oh, we've got to keep them apart before this goes any further. Yeah. Yeah, like right now. Dusty. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing there? I got a better question. What are you doing sitting on my lap? Well, I didn't know your lap was there. Now move over. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Mr. Callahan. Yes? Uh, I have something I'd like to tell Mrs. Brookhaven. Would you mind moving? No, no, no. Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> what a lucky wife you are to have such a charming, devoted husband like Mr. Brookhaven. I know that. Betsy, your beans are ready. Now? Oh, uh... Well, uh, Lulu, would you mind taking my place? What's wrong with where I am? Well, this log is much softer over here. <laughs> okay. I was just telling Mrs. Brookhaven about how wonderful her husband is. Faithful and devoted. Isn't that right, Lulu? Well, he uh, never winked at me, Mrs. Brookhaven. The beans are ready, Lulu. Come get them. <laughs> Hey, Kirsty, what's the matter with you? I just can't seem to sit still tonight. Uh, maybe Annie's serving jumping beans. <laughs> my, but it's chilly tonight. You know, Mr. Brookhaven, if I had a wife as beautiful as yours, I'd put my arms around and keep her warm. I'd do better than that. I'll go fetch her shawl. Thank you, dear. <laughs> Mr. Callahan. Huh? Oh. Now that Mr. Brookhaven is gone... <laughs> I can tell you that I have an unexpected surprise for him. What? It wouldn't remain a surprise if we told everyone, would it? <laughs> Quite right. <laughs> if we told everyone, our secret might leak out. <laughs> <laughs> doing a wonderful thing trying to save the Brookhaven's marriage. Well, from what you've been telling me has been going on, we'd better get Mr. Callahan's mind off of Mrs. Brookhaven in a hurry. Are you sure you can do it? If I can, I'll turn in my beauty mark. <laughs> Just getting everything ship shape for today's trek. Well, uh, <clears throat> speaking of, of ship shape, what do you think of my new outfit? That's great. Hand me that 
can act some grease there, would you? Sure. Only I'll uh, have to be real careful, Kevin, because I don't want to get any grease on this on this tight, form-fitting dress. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, boy, I always admire you wagon masters. I mean, you're such a such a mass of muscles. You know, I'll bet if you uh, if you hugged a girl, you'd put a dent in her rib cage. Nice speaking of rib cage. I sure wish we could fatten up old Bessie. That gotta she do sweat a lot on the trail. Well, <laughs> you know, there's, a, there's a lot more interesting things around here besides trails and horses. If you just uh, open your eye. <laughs> Hey, that's a pretty good idea. I've been looking all over for that wrench. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> I believe she's wearing a new dress. Well, how'd it go? Like the Battle of Waterloo. Meet Napoleon. <laughs> I took the emerald from my ring. Do you think it adds the right touch to the headdress? Oh, Mrs. Brookhaven, that's a thing of beauty. Oh, I thought it needed a little something extra. <laughs> now, where can I hide it so that he won't find it and spoil our secret? Well, uh, how about the covered wagon? He never goes in there. Oh, just the right place. Yes, ma'am. Oh. <laughs> I've hidden dear Carter's present where no one will ever find it. Oh, that's good. Here, let me help you down, Mrs. Brookhaven. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Husband is always the last to know. Callahan, on hand, my wife. Well, you don't understand. I said on hand, my wife, sir. But drop her at once, sir. <laughs> You're jumping to conclusions. Sir, I challenge you to a duel. <laughs> I'm not riding with that woman. Whoa! Everybody, whoa! Look, Mr. Brookhaven, you can't walk all the way to California. I can try. I will not ride with Mrs. Brookhaven or that wife-stealing wagon master. At, at least get my coach and talk it over with Mrs. Brookhaven. Not until I avenge my honor. After the duel with Mr. Callahan, she can take the one that's left. Duels don't settle anything. You might get shot. Shot? Good heavens. Why are we stopping? The duel is off. Well, I'm certainly glad to hear that. Me too. Now I'd have to keep that secret. What secret? Well, I saw Mr. Callahan kissing your wife. <laughs> you kissed my wife? No, Mr. Brookhaven. You can't. <laughs> my second within the hour. Before you go ahead with this duel, Mr. Brookhaven, I've got to warn you, Mr. Callahan's a dead shot. Andy, I think you should know I once won a piggy bank in a shooting gallery. That piggy didn't shoot back. You have a point there. Uh, nevertheless, my honor is at stake. Mr. Brookhaven, if you'll just give me two minutes, I can explain this whole situation. Andy, I appoint you my second. I refuse to speak to Callahan. Tell him he has one minute to leave. You heard him, Mr. Callahan. You've got one minute to leave. <laughs> well, if he's going to behave like that, you tell him that he can speak to me through my second, who is Dusty. Dusty, you tell him that I am not interested in his wife. I am not interested in his wife. I mean, I'm interested in your wife. I mean, his wife. He's not interested in your wife. Then why was he kissing her? Then why was he kissing her? Why was he kissing her? It had to do with a birthday present. I didn't even believe that one. Shut up. <laughs> shut up. Shut up. No one tells the Brookhaven to shut up. <laughs> Tell him I shall meet him on the field of honor. Oh, Mr. Callahan. <laughs> Miss Brooks. Oh, Mrs. Brookhaven, we shouldn't be seen talking to each other. We're in enough trouble as it is. I simply had to tell you. Even though Mr. Brookhaven doubts my love, I don't want him to get hurt. Well, neither do I. But I tried to talk him out of it. He challenged me to a duel. I... There must be a way. Well, if there is, I'm sure that I don't. Well, yes, there just might be. 
one way. <laughs> what is it you wanted? Nothing. I just thought we'd take a little walk and get some fresh air and that... Oh. oh, my. What have we stumbled upon? It looks like Mr. Callahan's practice range. the tail feathers right out of the eagle. Destruction of money. Unforgivable. What about the duel? You're going to give it up now. No, I am not. I need more practice. Are you sure you want to go through with this? Yes, I'm sure. Good thing I'm not a few inches taller. <laughs> well, give up the duel, Mr. Brookhaven. It's not worth your life or mine. When a Brookhaven's honor is at stake, there is no turning back. <laughs> Hold it. What are you doing there? I want to be where it's safe. <laughs> and in the unlikely event that a stray Callahan bullet should pierce my aching heart, I bequeath the sum of one million dollars to my favorite charity, the Institute for the Underprivileged Rich, <laughs> and to my beloved wife, Daphne. Yes, Mr. Brookhaven? I leave all my gold mines, all my banks, and everything else they can't take with me. <laughs> oh, Mr. Brookhaven, you're the most forgiving man I've ever met. You must love her deeply. Oh, oh I do. I do, my dear. I love her more than I love my mother. And she left me my fortune. <laughs> Bedroll's still made up. You been up all night? Yeah. Trying to figure some way out of this silly duel. Got any ideas? Well, the only thing I can think of is to go ahead and have the duel and make sure I miss him. The only trouble with that is he'll be shooting at you. Did you ever see Mr. Brookhaven shoot? Couldn't hit a buffalo if he's riding on its back. <laughs> make it lucky. He's got six shots. Well, you got a point there. You know, I was thinking, what if we took the lead out of the bullets and just left the powder. Yeah, blanks, huh? Mm -hmm. That way Mr. Brookhaven could avenge his honor and nobody get hurt. Exactly. Hey, you're a genius, Handy. But don't tell anybody. Mr. Brookhaven must never know. Never. Hey, cheers. <laughs> the duel will proceed in five minutes. Mr. Callahan has given you first choice of weapons. I'm not sure which one to pick. Take my word, sir, they're identical. Oh. I'll give the other gun to Mr. Callahan. Tell him to expect a rigorous battle. He is only his life at stake. I have my millions. Here's some things you might need, Mr. Brookhaven. Some bandages and splints and... Oh, yeah, there's a stretcher out by the field. Bandages and splints? And the smelling salts for me. I can't stand the sight of blood. I know there's going to be plenty of that. Well, perhaps everyone is right. Perhaps we should call the whole thing off. Well, hooray! <laughs> That's great, Mr. Brookhaven. I mean, what do you care everybody calls you a coward? Coward? A Brookhaven has never turned his back on danger. The duel is back on. My gun, please. I can't find it. Very well. I'll use yours. You may inform Mr. Callahan that I am ready to face him. And may the richest man win. Shoot straight, sir. I will show no mercy. You, sir, have stolen your last wife. Let the duel proceed. Gentlemen, you will each take ten paces, and on the count of ten, you will turn and fire. Ready, Dusty? Ready. One. Two. Carter, you mustn't go on with this. It's all a dreadful mistake. You, you see, I was planning this surprise for you. Oh, now, Daphne, Des, please stand back. Mr. Callahan has just cock-colded his last cock-old deed. 
It's a matter of honor now, dear. Mrs. Brookhaven. There's nothing to worry about. Mr. Callahan and I took the lead out of the bullets. There's nothing in there but powder. Oh, thank heavens. Okay, then. We have to start over again. Everybody back up. <laughs> Ready or not? One, two, three. <laughs> Dusty, can't you count to ten any faster than that? No, 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 okay. I have to start all over again. Back up. <laughs> <laughs> On your mark. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ye gods, what's all the rush about? I can't wait to find out how it turns out. <laughs> Nine, ten. Dusty, get down! <laughs> Out of the way! <laughs> well, I have fired my best shot, Mr. Brookhaven. Now it's your turn. Thank you, sir. That's <laughs> a real bullet. Well, what did you expect, a marshmallow? Defend yourself. Mr. Brookhaven. <laughs> My honor has been avenged. Daphne, come along, dear. <laughs> Andy, I could have been killed. Well I can't figure out how real bullets got in Mr. Brookhaven's gun. That wasn't Mr. Brookhaven's gun, that was my gun. Your gun? Uh, Dusty, how did he get your gun? I mean, for crying out loud, I could have been killed. I'm sorry, Mr. Callahan, but at least he learned a great dance. Uh, oh, yeah, I did. did. <laughs> what did you do that for? I don't like to dance alone, little pal. I don't like to dance alone. <laughs> <laughs> he don't even know I'm shooting blanks. <laughs> For he's a jolly good fellow that nobody can deny. Thank you, thank you, one and all. Just imagine, I'm wearing a real Indian chief's headdress. <laughs> well, I'm mighty glad we got our misunderstanding cleared up, Mr. Brookhaven. Put her there. No longer, Mr. Brookhaven, sir. <laughs> From now on, big chief, never be suspicious of wife again. <laughs> You know, if I ever get married, Mrs. Brookhaven, I hope I get married to someone like you. Oh, thank you, Dusty. <laughs>